Sports. We are Blackboard. We are LA. It's time for Angels Spring Training Baseball this afternoon from Tempe Diablo Stadium. The Angels are back home to take on a division rival, the Oakland A's. Another beautiful day in the Valley. A little bit windy. Maybe the ball might be jumping out today. Terry Smith along with Jose Mota. So good to be back with Jose. Jose, tell everybody where you were. You were out of the country for the past week. Had a great time, Terry, over in Panama for the World Baseball Classic qualifier and uh, truly a privilege to, you know, have a chance to promote the game see some new talent and also yeah. get to understand a little bit more about how other cultures other countries see the game and through their eyes it was wonderful the one thing i can tell you is the common ground everybody knew who mike trout was all right well let's talk about the angels and we'll talk about today's starting pitcher that's hector santiago maybe a little bigger role for him this season for the angels he had a very good year last year but the angels might be looking for a little more you bring up a really good point because Hector have really grown a lot. We saw the growth last year, especially in the first half of the season. Now, in spring training, you were hoping to see a Hector that comes in with command, ability to dominate and keep control of those counts. And we have seen him with the fastball elevating it, locating it well, using more of a slider. Sometimes a curveball in the off speed, but I think, Terry, you mentioned it. The Angels need Hector to be big and to be big all throughout the season for the things he learned and to last year in the second half. Hector has never won more than nine games in a season. His career best was nine a year ago. Also had career best in starts and also strikeouts and innings pitch. But the Angels might need a little bit more from him here in 2016. Well, after the starters, you have the bullpen. And the Angels have a lot of people that are fighting for roles in that pen. And bullpens have really evolved over the last three or five years because there's so many roles that are interchangeable. For example, you have a guy like a... Joe Smith can come in and pitch the seventh, the eighth, and even the ninth when he is needed to. Easton Street is on pace once again to go out there and with the stuff he's shown here, he's sharp with 89 to 91, just enough. But you continue down the line, the Angels edit Albert Kirky. He has more and throwing the ball so well. Pedroja and Jose Alvarez and a couple of more guys fighting for spots. Terry, we can see how bullpens nowadays can change so quickly. And even though you might have an idea as to who starts the season, throwing the sixth or seventh inning, who's your swing man? Oh, my goodness, one or two times around that rotation, things change very quickly. And we know Mike Such is looking forward to those new arms, too. Let's uh, address the Angels' offense. It's been exciting to watch, and it's been a little bit more aggressive this spring. Every spring we say the same thing, Terry. Let's hope that this translates into the regular season. When guys take the extra base, they are playing with no fear. They're playing aggressively. Beyond that is the fact that they're playing alert on so many opportunities to move a base, to take the extra base, to steal a base. But also with all that aggressiveness comes the smart of having good situational hitters behind you. Anytime you take the extra base, a change it you're at bat. And we are seeing how that's translated sometimes into simpler at bats here in camp. But Terry, throughout the regular season, they need to do more of this and be consistent with it. And sometimes the players themselves are going to be the ones dictating that these things continue on. And it doesn't have to be your fast guys. It could be a Calhoun. It could be also a Pools. It could be an Escobar. All that leads to good baseball, but overall, I think we're seeing why the numbers here in the spring look so good. Padded up with the fact that the Angels are playing small ball, adding a lot of runs, and among the team leaders in all of baseball and average collectively. How about yesterday uh, against Milwaukee? We saw Bo Trout and Calhoun drop down bunts uh, back to back at bats for those two in yesterday's action. Well, we're excited to see Andrelton Simmons back on the field. It's been over a week since he last played shortstop. He is a special player. I think uh, we've seen the difference he makes in those games he played and his coverage going back on pop ups. The communication with Johnny Gibatilla. I think at this point in spring training, you need the most that you can get out of those two guys together up the middle. But for sure, we know why he is not only the best. Best shortstop in the game, but the best defender in the game, and the Angels are happy to have Anderson back on the field. Hector Santiago goes for the Angels here today. Angels taking on the A's. Kendall Graveman, a right-hander, goes for Oakland. Windy day in the Valley. We'll have the lineups and the start of the action next on Fox Sports West.
here at Tempe Diablo Stadium. All the fans and all the colors and Mike Sosha and his ball club taking on the A's. Alongside Terry Smith, I'm Jose Moto, and so happy to be back with Angels baseball as the Angels take on the A's. Another beautiful day here in the Cactus, or Valley of the Cactus, Valley of the Sun. For the A's, manager Melvin with Billy Burns leading off at center field. Coco Crisp, the veteran, and left field trying to just bounce back in many ways, Coco Crisp. Batting third is Josh Reddick hitting 458 this spring. Reddick strong-armed in right field. Danny Valencia, quite a surprise for the A's last year. Nice pickup for them. Is batting fourth at third base. Billy Butler also hoping for a better showing with his new team, second year. It was three-year contract. Butler designated hitter batting fifth. Jit Lowry, welcome back to Oakland. The former Astro, former A is wearing the green again. Green and gold. He is at second base batting sixth. Stephen Boat, Azusa Pacific University. Yes, sir. He is batting seventh. He is the catcher for the A's. All-star Stephen Boat. Marcus Simeon surprised a lot of people with his home runs last year. Simeon off to a slow start here in spring. He is at shortstop batting eighth. Yonder Alonso acquired from the Padres. Alonso is a first base batting ninth. And on the mound for the A's is righty Kendall Graveman. As the Angels take the field, the Angels starting lineup is brought to you by McDonald's. I'm loving it. Mike Sosha with his lineup. Anderson Simmons is at shortstop, and good to see him back at the number six. He's batting first. Daniel Naba is in left field batting second. Mike Trout in center batting third. Albert Pujols getting closer and closer playing first base. Pujols, designated hitter, batting fourth. Cole Calhoun and Ralph Field will bat fifth. G-Man Choi slowed down a little bit now. Average wise, but uh, Terry gave me a good report on him. He says swinging the bat well, the numbers don't tell the whole story. So, G Man Choi, a good chance to make the ball club. He's at first base. He's batting six. The switch in the lineup with Gio Batella batting seventh at second base. Carlos Perez is a catcher, batting eighth at Ray Navarro is at third base. He's batting ninth. The switch in the lineup was Simmons was supposed to be batting later in the lineup for Mike Soja, but Terry, because uh, something medical with Yunel Escobar, obviously things are different now. Yeah, Jose, and we'll be getting an update on Escobar. He was slated to lead off. Uh, they moved Simmons from the seven hole to the leadoff spot, and uh, Ray Navarro is uh, replacing Escobar at third, and again, we're awaiting uh, the reason for the move. When we get that, we'll certainly pass it on. So we are just about set for baseball on this Tuesday. Dana DeMuth will be calling balls and strikes. We'll have Jim Joyce, Kerwin Danley, and Jim Wolf. The umpires on the bases. It is windy today, so keep that in mind. If uh, the balls are hitting the air with some power, they might get out. Here's the first pitch today, and that is right in there for a called strike. We're underway, and the count nothing in one. And it was a breaking ball from Hector Santiago. Billy Burns is the batter. Santiago gave up 29 home runs last year. And there's a pitch low, so he might have to deal with these weather conditions today. Wind is really gusting left to right, blowing out to right center. And the next pitch, that's outside. Two and one to count. 80 degrees as we get things started on this Tuesday here in the Valley. Angels red tops, white pants. Green tops, gray pants for the visiting Oakland A's. And there's a cut and a miss to count two and two. Angels are 10, 8, and 4 this spring. Oakland 9, 8, and 3. And the next one, it's fouled back by Burns, so he stays alive, the switch hitter. DC tells us the winds are gusting 18 to 31 miles per hour today. Keep the ball down. And if you're a hitter, go out there and elevate. Get something up in the zone. 2 2, that's fouled back behind the plate. Burns had a solid year last year for Oakland, nearly a 300 hitter. He hit 294. He can run. He had 26 steals. Not much for power, only five home runs. Here's the next pitch, and he's fooled on that one. Waves at that off-speed pitch. Struck him out. It took six, seven pitches for Hector Santiago, but he got rid of somebody who's ideally you need to keep off base. He could be a real headache. And the breaking ball once again. 
Uh, pitches working nicely there for Hector through seven pitches. So here's Coco Crisp who's on the comeback trail and he's had a pretty tough spring so far just five for twenty nine. Last year only forty four games for the A's because of the injury problems. Hitch is one seventy five and takes that one for strike one. Here's the next pitch and that one is fouled off. One thing Jose and we're seeing it right out of the blocks and it was the case the last time we saw Santiago on the mound. He has picked up the pace out there on the mound. Well, is that great or what? I mean it's only going to help him. Uh, you know as we talked about earlier he is among the strikeout leaders now tied for the strikeout lead in the American League here in the spring. He may not say much because it doesn't really count but overall you talk about a guy that uh, he really picked up and understood the urgency he had in getting after a good start here. Oh two this one is pop back foul up our way and it's going to land uh, right in front of us and then uh, pop uh, off the screen back down to the seats behind home plate. Oh and two. Let's keep a close eye. There's Anderson Simmons turning around and talking to his outfielders talking to Nava and Trout. A lot of balls will start in one area and finish up in another in the air. Here's the pitch taken by Chris Ben. He is out looking. So Santiago off to a good start. Back to back strikeouts here in the first inning. Josh Rennick, a left handed batter, will bat next. Also, like Terry, the uh, proportion of strikeouts on how they're distributed. Now he's got 19 strikeouts overall with five blocks here in the Cactus League. So the Angels will put the three man right side infield shift on with Reddick, the left handed batter at the plate, and he takes a low and outside. You have the first baseman Choi over on the right side of the infield. The third baseman Navarro is on the outfield grass on the right side, and Johnny Giavatella is also over there, the Angels' second baseman. Only Simmons playing his spot at short on the left side, and there's a pitch that evens up the count. One and one on Reddick. Reddick's having a good spring, and he takes that one for a called strike. Reddick in the talks last year before the trading deadline almost became an angel. As the Angels were looking for that bat, somebody to come in and play some left field. Here's the next pitch, and he had him reaching, chasing one outside, and he fouls it off on the left side behind the A's dugout. The A's are very careful. They pick their spots as to when they play Reddick against which left handers, especially. And they base it all not just lefty lefty, but against which lefties he has scuffled to most times keep him out of there. But when he is going good, he can hit anybody and he is fun to watch. Here's the next delivery. Lines that one is short, jumping up and making the grab of Simmons. So Hasn't played in the field in over a week and uh, already a difference maker. Uh, nice play by the shortstop and the inning is over. We're headed to the bottom of the first. There's no score in Tempe on the Angels Baseball Radio Network and Fox Sports West.
So we move to the bottom of the first. No score. Angels and A's and Andrelton Simmons will lead it off the shortstop. Ready is the right-hander Graveman and his first pitch today on the outside corner. That's a called strike. Kendall Graveman was 6-9 and nine last year with Oakland. 21 starts, ERA of 4.05. Spent some time in the minors as well. And his next delivery misses low. Graveman a sinker, top out around 92. Cut fastball, kind of a slider. He'll throw a curve and his changeup is a split finger fastball. Here's the 1-1. And that's right in there called strike. And that fastball will run right back. He starts at the first base side of the rubber, and you can see he is tall, he is lanky, he lands over that front leg, but he also has a sense of how to move the ball in and out naturally. 1 2 again outside, taken by Simmons. So two balls, two strikes. And the reason they want him on this side of the rubber, talking to some of the members of the Oakland A staff, is much more control of his glove side, which is an area where they think he's going to have a lot of success. And the pitch, that's a liner that's hit to short and caught by Simeon. Hit right at him, and Simmons is retired. Daniel Nava will be the next batter. That's a slider that he threw fairly hard. There was so hard, now you have the wind that's going to take effect on certain pitches, too, and the spins and velocities. It carried it all the way into Simmons's label when he was expecting that spinner to be a little bit more out of the plate. Here's Navu, who's had a great spring switch hitter, bats left against the right hander. Nava hitting over 500 this spring. And here's the pitch. Takes that one low. Got word on why Bunel Escobar was scratched. He was slated to play third and be the leadoff man, and that decision was made just a little bit before game time. There's a pitch that evens up to count 101. Doesn't sound too serious. Left eye irritation. You know what? It doesn't surprise me because there's so many people around here either with a flu or with some allergy issues. Mm -hmm. And now with the wind blowing like this it doesn't take a whole lot. If you've got some allergies start rubbing your eyes for something to get irritated and affect your vision. And yep. boy, you talk about a guy that's been seeing the ball well. <laughs> Don't mess with you now. Escobar right now. Really? So hopefully he'll be back in action on Thursday. The Angels have a day off tomorrow. And here's the pitch. And it's lifted high in the air into left field. Coco Crisp is battling the sun out there. And he makes the grab. So Nava skies out. That's out number two. Mike Trout will be the next batter. We should mention this was supposed to be a split squad day for the Angels as Mike Trout will be the next batter. And uh, we thought uh, Trout would be in Salt Lake City, Utah right now. But the Angels game against their uh, AAA club, Salt Lake Bees in Salt Lake City, was snowed out today. It is so unfortunate. I recall the press conference here a year ago announcing and promoting this game. Right. But uh, at least they knew early enough and the, the team did not have to make the trek down there. But still feel very sorry for all those people that bought their tickets and were waiting to see Mike Trout and company arrive there today. There's a pitch on the outside corner and it was something like 62 degrees yesterday in Salt Lake City and then they had snow overnight and the game got snowed out today. They were going to start a, a couple hours after our game, around uh, 3 o'clock today. But uh, luckily for the Angels players, they didn't uh, fly out there this morning as scheduled. Here's Trout blasting one deep into center field, but backpedaling and under and waiting, making the grab is Burns. And it's a 1-2-3 inning for Braveman. Second inning coming up in Tempe. No score on the Angels Baseball Radio Network and Fox Sports Web.
We get set for the second inning. No score as Santiago delivers, and that pitch is in there for a strike. This copyrighted broadcast presented by Authority of Angels Baseball cannot be reproduced, retransmitted in any form. The accounts and descriptions of this game may not be disseminated without the express written consent of Angels Baseball. At the plate, Danny Valencia, the cleanup batter for the A's today. Their third baseman. Valencia was with Toronto and then Oakland last season. Finished up with the A's. Had pretty good numbers. Hit 290. Had 18 home runs. He surprised a lot of people. Absolutely feasted off left-handed pitching. Here's the pitch. Santiago misses outside with that one. Valencia came up with a reputation with the Twins as perhaps marked as a future star of the game. But he's bounced around a lot and got sent down a few times. Had to be had to go into certain camps to make the teams as in Bidey. And really came, came into his own after many challenges last year and found a home here with Oakland. He's got him up the waiver wire and on the 3-1 that is ball four. So Valencia has a leadoff walk. Billy Butler will be the next batter. You could certainly argue that uh, Butler last season might have had his worst season in the big leagues. He hit 251 with 15 homers, drove in 65. And that was in his first year with Oakland after a long time uh, Kansas City Royal. He's DH at the plate. Here's the pitch. And that one, uh, fastball misses high. It's one ball, no strikes on Butler. Billy himself was the first one to say last year was an aberration. He not very proud of what happened. The numbers he put up had nothing to do with that ballpark, he says. But he trusted things will turn around. Billy Butler's a good major league hitter. Proven. That pitch is in there for a strike. He's having a pretty good spring. Infield a double play depth. You get him to hit it on the ground. Uh, pretty good chance you're going to turn two with Butler running. Santiago's 1-1. Lifted foul. Right side back and out of play. That's a very consistent swing. We know from Billy Butler and Terry whom of course could not hide his joy when he saw his former teammates celebrate that World Series. As the Royals take the crown he even talked about the crowd in the parade. Which is pretty amazing. And Billy himself became popular over other things in Oakland last year. Among them, his nickname, Country Breakfast. That's right. There was a commercial made about Country Breakfast <laughs> because of him. Here's the pitch. This is smack the short. Should be an easy double play. Second for one. And the relay gets Butler by a bunch. Anderton Simmons, sometimes that is just not fair. Come on. It's not that easy of a hop. <laughs> he basically looked like he does this every single time in his backyard. I mean, this hop has a lot of spin. His feet are corrected to a way in which he knows his hands are going to respond on the positioning. And he knew exactly where that ball was going to be hopping, even with some of these hard fields here in Arizona. Yikes. So the batter now is Jed Lowry. Who's back with the A's. He's kind of been going uh, back and forth between Oakland and Houston. And there's a pitch in there for a called strike. Lowry himself was surprised. Shocked that he got traded after the nice run with the Astros. Here's the pitch. That's way outside. One ball, one strike. And Terry, he delivered what perhaps was one of the biggest knocks against the Angels last year. A pinch hit home run against Houston Street. Day game. That was the day of the famous ball got stuck in Taylor Featherton's glove. That's right. And the, the, Indians were, the Indians were about to sweep that series from the Astros. And he had the big knock just wrapping the foul pole in right. There's a pitch that's cut on and missed, and Lowry is a strikeout victim. Three already for Santiago in two innings of work. Bottom of the second is next. No score here in Tempe on the Angels.
Baseball Radio Network and Fox. Albert Pujols will lead it off as we go to the bottom of the second. There's no score, and the first pitch on the Angels' designated hitter. It's in there for a strike. Albert's hit three out of the ballpark this spring. He's driven in nine runs, and the next pitch checks on that. Did he go around? Yes, on the appeal. So it's quickly no balls, two strikes. Graveman is a quick worker. He doesn't waste a whole lot of time. Left side infield shift on. That pitch is outside. It's one ball, two strikes on Pujols. And the next delivery. Albert lines one into center, going after it. Now they're waiting, making the grab is the center fielder. Billy Burns went away. Very interesting, Terry, as players share information before they go to hit. Well, Mike Trout came out of the dugout like in a sprint out to the on-deck circle before Pujols went to hit and uh, passed down some information. So first at bat now today for Cole Calhoun. Calhoun thought he was going to be headed to Salt Lake City today for that exhibition game against the uh, Angels AAA Salt Lake Club. It was a it was a big roster, and there's going to be a lot of minor league players also attending, and we're going to get a chance to play. And Terry, I'm sure a lot of people at Salt Lake City with their disappointment, of course, probably saw the weather yesterday. Says 62, but the ones that live there probably said, "Let's just." Not be fooled by anything around here. Keep our fingers crossed. Yes. Yep. Yep. Yesterday they would have played that game, probably had a sellout crowd, but uh, Mother Nature did not cooperate overnight. And I saw a uh, photo of their uh, ballpark uh, this morning, and it's it was all white. completely uh, covered with snow. It's all white. Yep. There's the pitch. It's outside. <laughs> Paul Calhoun has been doing a good job with his two strikes hitting four strikeouts overall so far this spring 40 at bats hope that this all translates into the same approach and contact with two strikes in the regular season next pitch on him with a one two on its way that one misses for a ball now Calhoun definitely wanting to uh, cut down on the strikeouts this season he was in the league leaders in that department, striking out in the American League a year ago. Right side infield shift on 2-2, goes the opposite way into left center field. Crisp is coming over, and he will make the running catch. So that would be 
Out number two and all five outs so far recorded by Graveman have been in the air. Not that, not what they want from him, but so far it's working. Really, I'm surprised the ball has not carried better. You see the ball hit by Trout deep center field. I thought for sure that was going to get in that stream. And the ball hit by Pujols, same thing. So two outs, no one on. Here is G-Man Choi. And the first pitch, he takes that one for a ball. One ball, no strikes. You know, G-Man has a very good chance of making the ball club. And as you educated me on, Terry, don't be fooled by his average, which is only a 200. And he's hit the ball pretty hard. He has uh, had his share of strikeouts, though, but he's shown how solid he is with the glove at first. He's looked okay so far in left as a pitch that's inside and uh, if he does make the club he's going to be a reserve you always like to have a left-handed batter to uh, coming off that bench late in the ball game here's the next delivery and that's a strike on the outside corner Valbert Pujols is doing a lot of DHing at the beginning of the season and Crone is playing first base Choi would be a good guy to bring in late in games uh, defensively at first as well on the pitch and there he takes one on the outside corner struck him out looking so six angels retired in a row and we are headed down to the third with no score in Tempe on the Angels Baseball Radio Network and Fox Sports West. Third inning, no score here in Tempe as Vote will lead it off. And the first pitch on him, that's ball one. Don't forget fans in attendance for the Angels opening series against the Cubs April 4th and April 5th. Receive a wall calendar. It's courtesy of U.S. Bank while supplies last. There's a grounder hit right to short. Should be an easy play for Simmons. And his throw in plenty of time. There's one gone. Simeon, the shortstop for Oakland, will bat. Want to remind uh, Angel fans, first pitch, 7.05 for the uh, first two home games against the Cubs on April the 4th and 5th. Every fan matters. You can purchase your tickets. Just go to angels.com or call 714-4-ANGELS. And operators are standing by. That phone number again, 714-4-ANGELS. First pitch on Simeon takes it for strike one. A shortstop hit 15 home runs last year. Takes that one low and in. One ball, one strike. It seems theory that now a year under his belt and with all the many errors, costly errors that he committed last year, certainly a year of experience knowing more about himself is going to be helpful to this young man. There's a little pop that just clears the infield and drops into 
Very shallow right rolls out to Cole Calhoun. And that will be a one out base hit for Marcus Simeon. That's the first hit in the ball game for either side. And it'll bring up their nine hole hitter, the first baseman, Yonder Alonzo, left handed batter. We'll check out the Jeep out of town scoreboard on this Tuesday. And it's being brought to you by Jeep Cherokee. Estimated 31 miles per gallon highway. It's the perfect choice. Visit Jeep.com for more info. And we'll run down a lot of finals in the Florida Grapefruit League in just a moment. Right side infield shift on the pitch. Grounded on the left side. Right at Simmons. Might be two. Flip to second. Relay to first. It is a double play. And that will end the inning. We're cruising along as we go to the bottom of the third with no score in Tempe on the Angels Baseball Radio Network and Fox Sports West. Angels set the bat, bottom of the third. We are scoreless as Johnny Giovatella leads it off. Takes ball one, one ball, no strikes. Jose and Drelton Simmons had not uh, played in over a week at shortstop for the Angels. And uh, he's already been part of turning two double plays in the first three innings. And robbing a base hit, too. Yeah. On the leap. Yeah. What's new? Either the ball's going to find him or he's going to find a way to find the ball. Yeah, he does. Huh? And that's going to make Johnny better this season. Givatella at the plate taking that one for a strike. Terry, think about this. How would how did Johnny Givatella feel when he read all winter, the Angels need a second baseman. The Angels need a second baseman. Huh? It's not an easy spot to be in. As for you, come out here and be a spark for your ball club. Last year, and did so many things offensively. Yes, yes, he did come up short many times defensively, but let the guy grow, man. Yeah, worked hard in the huh? offseason to try and get better defensively. 3 1 pitch, and that is inside. So that'll be a five pitch walk. Angels' first base runner of the day. Carlos Perez will be the next batter. Carlos, I mean, Johnny became way more valuable than what the numbers portrayed and maybe a couple plays here and there that he didn't make. I mean, he meant a lot to the lineup. He meant a lot to the clubhouse and certainly to manager Mike Socha on how many slots he can spot him in in that lineup. It came through big time many times. Here's the pitch on Perez. He takes it for strike one. Carlos needs to get going, and Carlos has been hitting again those lazy fly balls, kind of reaching for the ball. We want to see that Carlos waits on the ball and stays on it with two hands, finishes off the swing. Here's the pitch. He chops this one softly on the third base side. Only one chance for an out first. It's in time to get 
Perez as Giovatella moves up to second. Valencia thought about going to second and then realized that Giovatella was about ready to slide into the bag. So 5-3 ground out. Ray Navarro will be the next batter. See those rush that bats we're seeing more of from Carlos. Those things that uh, affected him when he first got called up. Just uh, not able to work counts, stay back, control the counts of the at-bat. Still got Tom Terry to get it done. Angels just under two weeks away from opening day against the Cubs at Angel Stadium. Here's the pitch, and this one is bounced back to Graveman. He throws to third, and they have the rundown on Gia Vitell between second and third. It's running back to third base. Now he jams on the brakes, and they will tag him out. It's kind of a hard tag right there, and Johnny's lying on his back. Well, well Johnny didn't land awkwardly. He's holding on to something there. So they're going to take a, a look at Gia Vitello. Of course, so he has to come off the field. He was tagged out, but he's still hand. seated. You know, left hand is what he's looking at here. In the wrist area. Well, Johnny does his job, on was, which was originally a bad base running play. And once that happens, don't put your head down, stay in it, and give the hitter a chance to get to second base. So all you did pretty much is exchange places. So Gia Vitella is up and walking off the field. That's a good sign. And I wonder if it was on the tag or on the fall, because he kind of rolled over in front to avoid that tag later on. So. Better now will be Simmons. And who knows if he might have gotten spiked. Hmm. But it would appear he'll stay in the ball game. We'll find out when we get to the top of the fourth when the Angels are out on the field defensively. So here's Simmons with a chance to bring in Navarro. And the pitch on its way. He takes that one for a ball. Astros beat the Braves today in the Florida Grapefruit League, 8-7. Carlos Correa's third home run this spring. Minnesota split squad over Baltimore, 5-1. Mauer and Plouffe had home runs in that Twins win. Two big bats they really need. You talk about the Twins and how many people they shot by being the race in September, Terry. Yeah. Pretty amazing last yeah. year. Miguel Sano, more time under his belt. Their pitching staff. Hopefully uh, they can find again dependable closer after scuffles they've had there. Well, Molitor did a nice job. Hey, the, the Twins have one managing. Of, they have one of the best second basemen in the game that nobody talks about. Bluffing a pickoff toss there is Graveman. And they also have a very good farm system and a lot of good young talent that has kind of cracked the major league roster now. Brian Dozier surprises many people the way he plays the game and the power he has. There's a pitch that Simmons takes for ball two. Miami shut out the Red Sox today. The storyline there, very good outing for Jose Fernandez of Miami. Five hitless innings with four strikeouts. Boston had only one hit and getting shut out 3 nothing. Here's Simmons lifting one high, and he hits it well in the left field. Wynn carrying it. That ball is out of here. So Simmons gets one to get out down the left field side. Coco Crisp ran out of room. That's a two-run homer, and it's 2 nothing Angels. Well, Simmons was slated to hit seventh today with a change because of Escobar and the left eye irritation. He gets to the leadoff spot, and he's had two quality at-bats. He had lined out to the shortstop first time up, and now he squares one here. Bit off the end of the bat, but he got a lot of spin because of that, and once he got that spin, well, the wind took care of the rest. Here's the pitch, and that one uh, pitch taken for a ball by Nava. Now, the wind was blowing left to right. Now it's kind of blowing straight out. It's shifted a bit, and it's very windy here today in the pitch. That one is low and outside. That pitch found the exact correct placement on the barrel. It even sounded funny. But put it up there, you'll have a chance. 
So the Angels' first hit of the day, a home run. Here's a liner, and it's caught by Lowry, the second baseman, and that's how the inning will end. But the Angels get a two-run homer, have a 2-0 lead as we head to the fourth on the Angels Baseball Radio Network and Fox Sports West. Fourth inning we go, 2 nothing Angels as Billy Burns leads it off. And uh, first pitch, that's right in there for a called strike. Hector Santiago's faced a minimum number of batters through three innings, just nine. Angels have turned a couple of double plays behind him already. And here's the next pitch, a cut and a miss. One on one the count. Santiago is ready, and here's the 0-2. That is a called third strike. Struck him out. Second batter he's gotten looking, and the fourth strikeout already for Hector in this ballgame. Hector now leading the American League in spring training. Any team in strikeouts. He is locating well. Going to those breaking ball early and late in the count, but mainly basing everything off his bread and butter. Is that fastball. So here's Chris. Terry, and, and you're not kidding. He is working fast. I mean, he's even warming up fast between innings. Right. We've <laughs> never seen, well, I, I say never because it, it really started a, a start or two ago here this spring, but in an Angel uniform regular season, we've never seen him work at this pace. And it seems to be working for him. It agrees with him. Is that Keep when it's fouled off? Keep it. As you and I were talking today in the TV open, there's many things that happen in spring training that work for you and for a team collectively that then all of a sudden the lights turn on and you abandon it for a reason. You can't be afraid of things that have worked for you when you're competing, spring training or not, your backyard, whatever it is. Give it a shot in the regular season. Slow the game down. 1-1. One, one. Or speed it up if that works. <laughs> yeah. And he's working so fast right now that the Oakland batters are uh, stepping out of the box. Here's the 2-1 pitch. That's hit well in the left field. Going back is Nava. That's out by the wall. And he'll reach up. And a foot or two in front of the wall makes the catch. Just a long out. Deep on the warning track. Nava to gather that one in. Two are gone. Very interesting reaction. Coco Crisp hit that ball. And he immediately looked to his right. He thought he had that for sure. And as that ball is caught, his reaction at first base is to go, oh my goodness, I think I just showed up. This showed off a little bit too early there. <laughs> thought he had a home run. Boy, it was more like he looked at the Angels staff 
sitting outside the dugout saying, there you go, gotcha. First pitch a ball on Reddick. Here's the next one. That's inside. Couple of other scores in uh, grapefruit play. It was a twin split squad beating the Phillies 7 to 5. Toronto clobbered Detroit 16 to 1. Blue Jays had 23 hits in that game. Two Lewitsky and Smoke had homers. And here's the next pitch. That's on the outside corner. And also uh, the exhibition series in Cuba underway today. Tampa Bay with a 4 0 lead against the Cuban national team in the eighth inning. It is packed. Yep, James Maloney with a home run for the Rays as that one is fouled back to the screen. One of the biggest stories there in terms of the roster composition is a young man named Dyron Verona. Born in Cuba. He is a minor leaguer. He's not even on the roster, but he was invited for this game. And they made him lead off, Terry. They said the stadium just went crazy. How about that? Here's the chopper hit the Simmons. He's having a busy day out there at short. First, first, the inning is over. Clean inning for Santiago. Bottom of the fourth is next here in Tempe. And it's 2 nothing Angels. The Angels Baseball Radio Network and Fox Sports West. Houston Street, and you're listening to Angels Baseball. Mike Trout leads off the Angels' fourth, cutting and missing the first pitch from Graveman. It's no balls and one strike and on the Angels' that, center fielder. Terry, first pitch breaking ball, just getting a sense that Mike Trout was going to be swinging on that first pitch. Good job there by Graveman on his catcher. Here's the next one. This is lined in the right center, but it's hanging up, and Reddick is there to put it away. Trout got good wood on it, but he's retired. So here's Albert. Angels have hit some balls hard that have been caught. Calhoun. Nava. Now Trout. Trout twice, pretty yeah. much. Pujols, deep center. Yep. So here's Albert. Hit that ball to uh, Billy Burns his first time up. Left side infield shift on. Here's the delivery. And that's right in there for a called strike. Nice crowd today on this Tuesday. Pujols is closer to taking the field at first base, which is his goal. And of there's course, one low and outside. There are so many veteran players that at this point will be happy to be getting paid and say, you know, what? I'm happy just de-aging. That is not the makeup of Albert Pujols. Next pitch inside, it misses. It also, of course, helps when you have so much support from your staff, the medical staff, and then your manager saying publicly, I think Albert knows. We all know we, we are a better team when he is at first base. And he cuts and misses that one. It's two and two. I am guessing that still, if he start thinking about proportions, he will probably DH more than he had ever done in his career by design. But if the foot 
feels better when he's on the field and stays looser, Terry. There's no need to have him DH just to DH. Albert has been very clear saying sometimes just to be involved defensively helps. Just to keep the whole body warmed up. And Albert is a very good defensive first baseman. Full count, payoff delivery. That's inside. It's ball four, one out walk. Second walk issued by Graveman. Angels have base runner for Cole Calhoun. And don't forget, the Angels return to the Big A for exhibition games against the Dodgers on Saturday, April the 2nd, and the Cubs on Sunday, April the 3rd. You can get your tickets today. Just go to angels.com, or you can order by calling 714-4-ANGELS. Operators are standing by. Here's the pitch, and it's tipped foul right into the mid of the catcher vote. 0-1 oh on Calhoun. Terry Smith, Jose Mota, and our producer engineer Darren Chan with you for Tuesday afternoon. Baseball Angels will have a scheduled day off tomorrow, and then Cactus League resumes on Thursday with a game at Camelback Ranch. Angels will play the Chicago White Sox, and the pitch that's popped up foul, third base side. Valencia has a play near the coaching box. He makes the grab on that one. He almost ran in too far, and then he had a jam on the brakes, but makes the catch, and with Two outs, G-Man Choi will be stepping up. Jose, I mentioned uh, Thursday, Angels and White Sox. And, of course, uh, the White Sox have uh, certainly been in the, the news over the last, well, almost week now uh, yeah. concerning the uh, situation with uh, Adam LaRoche and his son. And Go on, his biggest advocate is going to be on the mound on Chris Sale. Yeah. There's a pitch uh, check swing and holding up on that one is G-Man Choi. Sale against Shoemaker in that game Thursday at Camelback Ranch. Funny that whole story about Adam LaRoche uh, with his son uh, at the White Sox training camp. Uh, that story has become uh, more than a, a sports story. It's uh, being talked about talk shows, TV shows. Everyone seems to have an opinion on that. Uh, Anytime you see that connection and commitment, family or work is going to bring that. Here's a fly ball lifted into left field. That one bangs off the wall. Crisp will throw it back to the infield. And Choi has an opposite field double to deep left center field. There's a ball that perhaps even Pujols himself did not think it was going to be carrying as much as it did. And Coco Crisp, who just crushed a ball to deep left field, probably wondering how this ball even carried that much, too. But it's just very unpredictable. Once it starts warming up, depends on how aligned you hit the ball. I mean, so many things, so many factors. But good to see G-Man get into the act here. He so, needed that hit. Yep. Yeah. Albert goes uh, first to third on that double. Two outs. And here's the next pitch. And this is Johnny G. Vitella batting. Takes one low and inside. We'll see if he can come through. A hit could mean a couple runs here. Well, this was Johnny's spot right here. When the Indians offense was scuffling badly, and it did most of last year. It was Johnny's name that was called by the fans in situations like this. This one fouled off. He thrived in two out run scoring situations. Johnny had 13 go-ahead RBIs last year. But it seems like out of those 13, probably 10 came after the seventh inning. Just even a year ago at this time was when Johnny started just cracking, just cracking the spring training lineup for the Angels. Here he chops one sharply, but it's right near Valencia, the third baseman. His throw is handled by Alonzo, and the inning is over on the 5-3 ground out. Angels had a shot, but failed to add on. We're already headed to the fifth inning. It's 2-0 Angels on the Angels Baseball Radio Network and Fox Sports West.
is Mike Trout, and you're listening to Angels Baseball on AM 840 KLAA. Danny Valencia, uh, first batter up here for Oakland as we head to the fifth inning, 2 0 Angels. And the uh, first pitch hat is hit well in the left center field, and that one is gone. Boy, there was no doubt about that one. Valencia with the home run right there, and for Danny Valencia, that's his fifth one this spring. 2 1 Angels lead. As it warms up, as balls get more elevated, of course, we'll see more of these results. With no doubter, man, this is going to be gone, wind or not. Leg lift, separation. Go through the zone, smash it. Billy Butler at the plate now, takes that one for a called strike. That was a true lift and separate ton swing. Santiago's next delivery, it's low and away. One ball, one strike. Terry, I think this also serves a little microcosm of the regular season when you like to see Santiago finish off strong. Yeah. He's been economical, he's been around the zone, he's worked fast, but he cannot let that leadoff home run derail him here on his goal of getting through five. Here's the next pitch that's fouled off on the right side, back and out of play. Fans, don't forget, if your computer is running slow, go to MyCleanPC.com. Get a free computer diagnosis in minutes. You can activate MyCleanPC software to clean out the junk that may be slowing down your computer. Check them out at MyCleanPC.com. 1-2 pitch, low and in. 2-2 two and two the count. Big crowd on hand for this Tuesday afternoon action. Angels will be uh, taking on the A's on Friday as well. It'll be a road game for the Angels as that one is fouled off. A's now uh, with their spring training base in the Cubs' old spring training base in Mesa. Ho-Ho-Kam Park. Well, the first time we saw that ballpark in green and gold, we're like, wait a minute, what All happened right. here? Yep. There's one that's low and inside, and let's pause for stations to identify themselves on the Angels Baseball Radio Network and Fox Sports West. Next delivery, it's chopped on an easy hop to short, and it's stopped by Simmons, and he will throw out Butler. Billy Butler's hit a couple on the ground to the Angels shortstop. That's the first out here in the fifth inning and Jed Lowry will be the next batter. Nice job bouncing back. That's what you want. Get the ball down. Get a Billy Butler to swing into the ground on your pitch. And Billy is hot. And he's not very happy that he missed that at bat. Lowry struck out. His first time up. That was in the second one of four strikeouts so far for Santiago, he's walked one, allowed two hits and one run. It's 2-1 Angels here in the fifth. And the pitch, blowing in. Next delivery. This is chopped over the mound, out behind second, and it's going to skip through for a base hit. And then the ball fumbled a bit by Trout, who throws late to second. So Trout's going to get an error on that one, enabling the uh, batter Lowry to get the extra base. We talked about it this spring. Mike Trout did not commit an error all last year during the regular season. Well, this just tells you how easy it is to go out there and commit an error. And the fact that he did not commit one last year is absolutely remarkable, hard to believe, but... Quite simple right here. Pick up the baseball. But he's looking where? He's looking to see what Lowry is doing around first base. And that's where he loses track of the baseball. And it costs him the error. So that puts the potential tying run at second. One out in the inning. And Stephen Vogt at the plate. Here's the pitch on Vogt. And that's a breaking ball in there for a called strike. Vogt was an all-star last year. He did tail off a bit in the 
second half of last season. Yes, he did. Like, big time. He's still just a great story. But somebody just did not give up. There's a pitch and misses. Snap throw to second and back to the bag goes the base runner Lowry. Now yeah, vote became a everyday player at the major league level for the very first time last year and then was also an all-star last year. Well, one point in there for a pretty good run. He was leading the American League in RBIs. Here's the pitch that's fouled back. So you have two guys facing each other that know all about uh, the importance of not just starting right and grabbing a spot either in the lineup or in the rotation, but also the importance of finishing off strongly. Mentioned vote had the 18 home runs last year, but only four came after the All Star break. So quite a drop off. And the A's have done enough to improve their ball club, and you're always going to get good young starting pitching from them and it seems like the bullpen issue that were terrible last year are going to be fixed John Axford Ryan Matson leading the way with the experience and also they were one of the worst defensive teams in all of baseball and that's going to be better it should be a better team and challenging there's one a little bit low and misses for a ball so it's a full count on votes. Three balls, two strikes. But boy, Terry, they can find some good young pitching. They, they do a great job of that. Hector is ready. And the 3-2 pitch. This is lifted high in the air into center field. Trout has a beat on it. Backpedaling a little bit. He'll make the catch. Tagging is Lowry at second. And he will advance to third on... A fly ball deep enough to center. So that's out number two. Simeon will be the next hitter. Fans, keep up to date on all things Angels baseball by liking and following the Angels on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Find out how to follow your favorite Angels players at angels.com slash connect. Also going to have an Angels social media coming up soon on uh, AM830. Once a week. We'll have one once a month, Jose. Once a month. Okay. So uh, we'll have one in April. Not sure of the date yet for that. And there's a pitch in there for a called strike. That'll be our uh, Angels Baseball Radio Network social media day. 0-1 pitch. That's high and outside. One ball, one strike. Here's the next pitch. And that's outside. Ball two. Two and one the count. Mentality here. Mindset for Hector Santiago. This is the game for him. Treated like a regular season type of a bat. Next pitch. And he misses with that one. So it's three and one on Simeon. If he keeps the inning alive, the nine hole hitter. Yonder Alonzo would be up next. And of course, think of regular season, first base open 3 1. He got a lefty up next. What is going to be the call here? It's a cut and a miss. Terry, the call was let me get after him. Yeah, he went after him. <laughs> he does not allow a lot of liberties when they swing the bat. He's in the 220s career, average against him. Here's the payoff, and this has popped up shallow right field. It's way up in the air, so Cole Calhoun has time to come in. He's under. He'll squeeze it, and the inning is over. He's stayed with a plan. They can swing the bat with a fastball. They settle for one run. We're headed to the bottom of the fifth. 2-1 Angels on the Angels Baseball Radio Network and Fox Sports West.
Carlos Perez leads it off for the Angels as we start the bottom of the fifth inning. He chases the first pitch, fouls it off over by the A's third base dugout. So it's nothing in one on Perez. He'll be followed by Navarro and then Simmons. 2-1 Angels as we start the bottom of the fifth and the next pitch that's low and away. Graveman is set and his next delivery sharply hit through the left side. Got it in between Simeon, the shortstop, and Valencia, the third baseman. So Carlos Perez, a leadoff single. Carlos needed that. He was telling me today just too much drifting with his front side. And certainly for Carlos, a matter about going back and spreading his legs out a little bit more and getting a wider base, trusting the hands. And you can see there the difference. As I spoke earlier, the rush at bat when he grounded out for the third baseman in the third inning. And this one, just calmer, but also able to finish that swing with two hands. Here's the pitch. There's a chopper on the right side just out of the reach of Lowry. He got some glove on it, and that was about it. No chance for an out. So Navarro has a hit, and the Angels have him at first and second to get this fifth inning going. Simmons will be the next batter. Well, there's been a couple of balls hit to the left of Lowry where I am not sure he's seeing it well off the bat, but as the ball approaches, there's been unnecessary dives to his left. And this one, if he keeps going and running, he might have gotten it without having to get dirty. Once he got dirty, the ball took a different hop, and it cost him. Simmons has hit the ball hard a couple of times against Graveman, including a home run in the third inning. And he's around the bunt, drops one down nicely, third base side. Valencia charges, has it, throws, gets him. But the sacrifice will advance Perez to third and Navarro up to second. And the Angels in business with two in scoring position with one out for Nava. Angels have used the sacrifice often here in the spring. And there's one where you have a guy that just lined out to short and hit a two-run homer, and now he's working on some things. I just get this guy over for my run producers. Question is, Terry, does it stay like this during the regular season? Well, let's hope it does. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Why not? And I think situations like this don't have to wait for the seventh inning when there's so much pressure. Here's Nava lining one into right. That ball will take a bounce in front of Reddick, and the Angels are going to get another run. Hey, Reddick, who's a very good defensive outfielder, uh, that ball got on top of him too quickly, I guess, because he wasn't sure whether he's trying to catch it in the air, play it on the bounce. RBI hit for Nava, and the Angels' lead is now 3-1. What might have happened here, he's playing the sound of the bat, and Nava absolutely crushes it. But this ball has got more downspin than Reddick thought would have. And the way the ball's been carrying, I'm quite sure experienced outfielders thought that ball was going to get to him on the fly. We've seen the wind affect the fly out of the ball, a couple of decisions out in the outfield. And this is one of them. I mean, uh, you talk to many outfielders are reading to see what's happening with the ball lately when it's coming off the bat, what it's doing once it crosses the infield, what it does when it gets to the gaps. And that one for sure played to the Angels' favor by dying. So Kurt Young, their pitching coach, went out to have a word with Graveman. Their bullpen is quiet. Graveman worked into the fifth inning in his last start. That was Thursday against Seattle. And at the plate now is Trout, and Mike takes ball one. It's one ball, no strikes. Last at bat, starting him off with a breaking ball, which Trout swung at. This time goes to a sinker inside. See if Trout will roll on something. Here's the next one on Trout. Cuts it that one, fouls it back to the screen. Fans, be a winner. Play in the Gardens Casino New Omaha Progressive Jackpot. Visit thegardenscasino.com for more info and please play responsibly. Come on, Mike. One ball, one strike on Trout. Next pitch. He takes that one low and inside. Trout coming into the day, hitting just under 400 this spring. Grayman induced the opponent to nine double plays last season and 115 and two-thirds innings. 
Here's the next pitch on Trout. Hits it sharply through for a base hit in between the third baseman and shortstop. RBI single for Trout. Angels add on. It's now 4-1. to one. That's a pretty good at-bat. You can see why Mike Trout is a big fan of going out there and working counts and not necessarily having to get anxious and jump on the first pitch. He just does not miss that many mistakes later in counts. And there's one example right there. Always more comfortable when he sees pitches. So Mike Trout with that RBI hit. Angels have runners at first and second. Gentry has come in to run for Trout, so his day is over. Oh, I see Craig Gentry stay in the game in center as well. Albert's at the plate, and he takes that one for a called strike. Keep in mind, Trout was not supposed to be playing here at home today. Yeah, he was going to be in uh, Salt Lake for that exhibition game. It was snowed out today. Here's the next one on Albert. He waves at that pitch and misses it. So the count on Pujols now. No balls, two strikes. That's a nice finish, that short slider there by Graven. Graven, one of 13 starting pitchers that the A's had to parade through the mound last year. 13. He made 21 starts, which is third on the team. Yes! Here's Albert lining one foul, and boy, that had first base coach Gary DeSarcina ducking to get out of the way. That's Albert Pujols, the swing man, in bad control master. Gary DeSarcina, be careful, but Albert's trying to shoot that hole between first and second. Wide open. Look at that. That is absolutely on purpose. Big, big hole there in that second base area. Second base position area. Albert steps out of the box. Jose, after the next pitch, I'm going to give you Mike Trout stat this spring that might surprise you, so uh, be ready for it here after the 0-2 on Albert. Anything about Trout surprise? Really? You this, think? This might. There's really? one that's low. Here we go. Trout's been up 36 times this spring. How many times do you think he has struck out? Because he does strike out a lot. He struck out 158 times okay, last we've, season. We've talked about... Uh, Calhoun cutting down. I'm going right. to say 36. I'm going to say six. There's one fouled off. Mike Trout has struck out one time this spring. How about that? So that's encouraging. I don't know that anybody's uh, made reference to that all spring. Good job, Trouty. Regular season. Hope it all continues the same way. Just imagine with his speed, Terry, just putting the ball in play half of the time. Of the times he strikes out, how much more is going to boost his average? How many more times is he going to be on base? How many times spoiling a good two-strike pitch is going to give him that walk? Here's the one-two. Albert with one chopped right into the shift, and it's fielded by the second baseman, and Lowry goes to the bag at second, throws the first doubles up Albert and the inning is over. The Angels do add on a pair of runs here in the bottom of the fifth. It's 4-1 Halos. We head to the sixth on the Angels Baseball Radio Network and Fox Sports West.
Hunter Alonzo leading it off. Left-handed batter here as we go to the sixth inning. The A's first baseman takes ball one, and the next pitch that's right in there called strike. One and one the count. Terry, one of the coolest things we witness, and it's pretty much on a given daily basis, Mike Trout leaving the ball game at home or on the road and always making time for those fans down the line. He is replaced by Gentry. Uh, Albert Pujols has uh, gone back to the clubhouse as well. He's DHing today, so when his spot comes up, we'll see who fills in for Albert. You saw Trout. You saw Pujols stop by and hand some autographs. Here's a high pop into shallow right center. A lot of people converging and coming over and making a nice play on that one. Is... Uh, Going to be uh, Simmons. Navarro. Navarro? Okay. Navarro, Navarro came Navarro over there. All right. Terry, I know that, uh, you know, these shifts sometimes can uh, mess <laughs> all of us up. Yep. It can mess the hitters up. But here's one where you figure, well, it's going to be a second baseman. And on a shift, you're looking for the shortstop to be in the middle. But nope. Right. Uh, Ray Navarro, Navarro at the very end, the third baseman. Because of where he was <laughs> situated, of course. Makes a great play. Mike Solcher made a great point about that as to why he's not going to mess around too much with moving Simmons out of his territory. Here's Burns, their leadoff man now with one out, and that's an off-speed pitch. He takes ball one. Another breaking ball first pitch here from Santiago to Billy Burns. That'll be a pattern to follow in the regular season. And again, uh, off-speed. That misses ball two. Two and oh, the count. Hector getting up for his sixth time. That's 76 pitches. So no other Angels pitcher had gotten up six times in the game here in spring training. Hector is the one that, of course, pitched the first game as he did last spring. Which uh, does not mean that he's lined up to start opening night. Santiago has uh, made the most starts of any Angels starter so far this spring. This is his fifth start, so... Might be a little bit ahead of some of the others. There's a pitch and misses ball three. Three and one the count. Well, we're hoping that uh, performances continue to improve for Jared Weaver, who recently threw in a minor league game. And for Matt Shoemaker. There's one that's bounced just out of the reach of Simmons, and it'll roll into left center. Hustling and going for two as Burns. Throw gets away. He's safe at second. And then Santiago backing up ends up with the baseball between first and second base. So that's a hustle double there for Billy Burns, his first hit of the day. Billy Burns baseball, man. Gotta love it. And it all starts in the batter's box. He singles through the box. He knows how far each one of the outfielders has to come. And then he forces the issue with that throw. That's the way to play the game. Coco Crisp, the next hitter. He's gone 0 for 2. We we're talking about the Angels rotation and the guys that need to step up like Hector. We have Garrett Richards. You need better showing from Shoemaker. Heaney has looked pretty solid. Tropiato can still improve. Of course, question marks on health issues with Weaver. Hopefully Skaggs taking a big step here on Thursday. Supposed to be facing minor leaguers on Thursday or not. Has been scratched. No, okay. he's, he's going to pitch against the White Sox on Thursday. Okay, because he had argued right. on pitching in the A game. Mike Socher originally said, no, nope, minor league. So I'm glad he won the argument. Yep. He's going to pitch in relief maybe a couple innings Thursday. At least that's the game plan as of today. Good. Yeah. One and one on Crisp. T.J. Wilson is behind pretty much everybody at this point. Basically... Uh, shut down right now. Speaking of C.J. Wilson, he'll very likely begin the year on the disabled list. Can't imagine him being on the active roster when we hit opening day on April 4th. Not going to happen. Yep. Here's the pitch. It's hit high in the air into left field. It's hanging up. Coming in is Nava. He'll make the catch in medium left center. And that will be the second out. So Burns remains at second. Two gone here in the sixth. Fans, register your little angel for the 2016 Junior Angels Kids Club for only $18. Members receive four ticket vouchers, a Junior Angels lunch bag, and other exclusive gifts. Sign up today at angels.com slash junior angels. 4-1 Angels here in the sixth inning. Score update brought to you by Experian. Get serious about your credit by visiting Experian.com. 
Riddick at the plate, two outs. He's hit the ball twice to Simmons today, once a liner and the other on the ground. And there's a pickoff toss to second, and that was Simmons, the uh, shortstop, who's uh, playing basically right behind the second base bag. He loves putting plays on, and he likes to find that out wherever it is, or at least keep in mind his presence to the base runners at second base. Here's the next pitch. Right in there called strike. Pitchers need to be on alert with Anderson. He'll start some plays. Same thing for the catchers when it comes out of the throwing behind runners in the middle of the infield. And a bluff pickoff move there. Burns diving back to the bag. Burns was going. Because he saw where Simmons was way further than anticipated. Oh, one pitch runner not going this time, and that one is fouled off down the left side, back and out of play. Hector against the A's last year, four starts in the regular season. One and one record, but they had his number, ERA near five. And part of the problem was in 20 innings, he walked nine batters, even though Oakland only hit 224 against him. It's when they hit him that it mattered the most with an ERA of close to five. Next pitch, that's lined the opposite way. It's going to drop into left field for a hit. Burns is going to be waved home. He can fly. The throw is cut off. Relay up to second and out will be the batter Riddick trying to move up an extra base. The run will count. So they do get one here in the sixth inning. It's a 4-2 Angels lead as we go to the bottom of the sixth on the Angels Baseball Radio Network and Fox Sports West. Cole Calhoun gets ready to lead off the bottom of the sixth inning. This is likely his final at bat of the day. And Graveman is still out there on the mound for these A's. His first pitch is in there for a strike. They have a new left fielder. Coco Crisp has left the game, and he's been replaced by J.P. Sportman. And the pitch, that's a cut and a miss. So we have Graveman pitching and Sportman in left. All right. <laughs> 0-2, oh, the count on Cole Calhoun. Cole Calhoun still without a home run this spring. He hit 26 during the regular season, and he takes that one inside. There's one spring here with uh, Mark Trumbull. And we hit further balls than Mark Trumbull ever. 
And the concern about Trumbull not hitting home runs in spring training. I believe he ended up with one. But boy, in that bell run, Mark Trumbull was hitting the ball like Mark Trumbo. And he's in Baltimore this year. And uh, Camden Yards will see if that agrees with him. Wow, if he spreads the ball around. Because he can tap a ball, touch it, and it'll go out to right field. Yeah. 2 2. This one is grounded right to the left side of the infield. That's Valencia over there. They had the shift on. He was the only defender there, and he will throw out cold for the first out. So 5 3 on the ground out. Making it clear, I'm not comparing Calhoun's power to Mark Trumbull, but certainly I would never worry about Calhoun and his production. As spring training winds down and he's working on this approach once again with two strikes and tapping the ball the other way. That's good. Ground balls. Better than a strikeout. Choi uh, waiting on Graveman who just asked for a new baseball from the home plate umpire Dana Demuth. We'll check out the Jeep out of town scoreboard in just a moment. It's brought to you by the Jeep Cherokee. Choi backs out of the box. I want to remind you the Jeep Cherokee with an estimated 31 miles per gallon highway. It's a perfect choice. Visit Jeep.com for more info. Here's the pitch. A little bit low. Misses ball one. Cactus League, sixth inning. Cubs lead the Reds 3-2. Fifth inning. Giants split squad up on the White Sox 4-3. Bell to home run for San Francisco. Jackson a home run for the White Sox. And there's a ground ball base hit. On the right side out of the reach of Alonzo by G-Man Choi, his second hit today. One out single. Also on the Cactus League, Colorado a 4-2 lead against Milwaukee. That's in the fourth. Arenado and Blackman with home runs for the Rockies. And in the fifth inning, Padres are leading the Rangers 9-2. to Good for G-Man to get himself a couple of hits. Build that confidence as we saw that average drop of 200. We're talking about strikeouts and you know somebody coming off the bench. Yeah, if he presents a power threat, great. But Terry, late in games, you know who's coming out of that bullpen? The best arms. Sure. What are the chances you're gonna run into something to change the game with one swing? Well, it could happen, but you need a guy that's gonna put the ball in play. You need a line drive guy, you need a good on base guy. But to fall in love, to have somebody on your team just because he might run into something, let me tell you, in in recent history and past history, and it's hurt more teams thinking that one swing can make a difference. And what it does is great, but 7, 8, 9, it's not 91, 92 anymore. It's 95 plus and some triple digits you're going to find. That one's low on Giovatella ball two, two and oh. I was talking to David Ortiz about this, about he goes, you know, when I came into the league with the twins, you, you know, he had good arms out of that bullpen at firm 94, 95 now. <laughs> he goes, those kids out of A ball are throwing 97, 98, 99s. Giovatella just taking another pitch that misses three balls and no strikes to count. That's why uh, Angels closer Houston Street uh, isn't the norm by any stretch. Guy that really doesn't uh, get much higher than 90 miles an hour and a lot of times maybe even less. And yeah, he makes it a very uncomfortable at bat for many but he also knows the margin of error is tiny. Here's the 3 1 on Gia Vitella. A uh, pop that's going to get over the glove of the jumping third baseman, Valencia. That one drops into shallow left field. Johnny Gia Vitella on for the second time today. First hit. Angels have him at first and second here in the sixth inning for Carlos Perez. And now it looks like uh, we're going to have a pinch hitter for him. And it also looks like we're going to have a new pitcher coming into the ballgame for the. Oakland A's so we have a break in the action pitching change coming up we get back Angels batting in the sixth leading 4-2 threatening to get more on the Angels baseball radio network and Fox Sports West.
Ryan Dole is the new pitcher. He comes in with two on, one out. And he is going to face Angels pinch hitter Cliff Pennington. Pennington having a very good spring. He'll bet for Carlos Perez, the eight-hole hitter. Perez went one for two. Angels will have a new catcher. And the Angels take the field in the seventh. So let's see what happens in this matchup. And the first one on Pennington. That one misses high for ball to count one ball, no strikes. So Graveman went five and one-third. Gave up eight hits right now, four runs earned. Here's the next pitch. And that's in there for a called strike. 101 is the count. Ryan Dole was in 13 games last year for the A's. Had a 1 and 2 record. One save, ERA of 4.24. Been a closer in the minors in the past in their organization. 32nd round pick by Oakland back in 2012. Here's the next pitch, and Pennington checks on that one. That's a ball, two and one. Terry filled me in on Pennington. He has gotten hot. Yes, he has. Huh? Yep. Boy. Getting over 430 this spring. And a guy who didn't hit much last year between the D-backs and the Rockies, but he's done a good job. Going to be a bench guy, somebody the Angels need, and you know, show something offensively to give people some rest. There's one foul back. To the screen and a couple strikes on Pennington. Originally an everyday shortstop with these Oakland Athletics. Right. First round pick of the A's back in 2005. So two and two the count. Dole is set. And the next pitch Pennington pops it up. Not far from the plate coming in is the first baseman and Alonzo will make the catch out in front of the batter circle about halfway between the mound and home plate. So that's out number two. Ray Navarro will be the next batter. Fans, don't forget the 20-game flex plan offers a variety of game options to choose from, which includes opening night, premium matchups, and popular promotional giveaway nights. Visit angels.com slash ticket plans. Angels looking for a two-out hit up by two runs, 4-2 here, bottom of the sixth. Here's the pitch, and that's inside and misses. Hector Santiago, the Angels starter, going six innings. And we'll see if uh, that's all for Hector. You would think it probably is. Here's the 1-0. That's low and away. 2-0 the count. Field remains back with two outs. Dole taking a little extra time. Delivers on Navarro. That's in there called strike. Navarro himself trying to open some eyes. He and Gregorio Petit. A lot of times it's not just making the team. It's making enough of an impression to get that call once the season begins. If there is and when there is a need. There's one to tie it outside. And it's got like Navarro who has experience in the big leagues. Most recent with Baltimore Orioles. It's about changing organizations and immediately to see under those new set of eyes how is it that you are the best fit. And Mike Sosha loves versatile players, man. Counts 3-1 on Navarro. Here's the next delivery. He cuts it that one and fouls that one back behind the plate. The Angels taking on the A's today. The last Arizona Cactus League game for the Angels will be one week from today. Cleveland will be here, and that will wrap up the Arizona Cactus League. Then the Angels will head back to Southern California for four more exhibition games with uh, three against the Dodgers, one against the Cubs. 
Runners go. The pitch line foul on the first base side. Yeah, it's going to be busy back in SoCal, Terry. It was the first time, at least in our time here, 15 years, that uh, the Indians will have four exhibition games right. instead of just three. Three will be against the Dodgers and one against the Cubs. The uh, one against the Cubs the day before the season opener. So that exhibition game against the Cubs will be on April 3rd. But uh, that is the day of the official Major League Baseball season opening. Right. Full count three and two. We'll see what happens on the next one. And here it comes. It's pop back foul. So Navarro staying alive. Today's attendance here in Tempe, 7,530, 7530. It has been remarkable. See the cars parked out here early. So many people awaiting the players between the fields. Spring break is here. So many people from Southern California. Spending this whole week here watching the Angels wherever they travel, they follow. All right, here we go. Angels, after uh, today's game, will have just three more home Cactus League games and three more on the road. Here's the next delivery. This is popped up on the third base side, foul ground right by the coaching box under his Valencia, the third baseman. He'll put it away. And that's how the inning will end. So the Angels had a threat fail to score. Six completed. The seventh is next for two Angels on the Angels Baseball Radio Network and Fox Sports West. Angels uh, making changes as we go here to the seventh inning. One player who hasn't uh, changed is the pitcher, Hector Santiago. He's at least out to face a batter or two here in the seventh, and the batter is Danny Valencia. Here's the next delivery, and that's in there for a called strike. Don't forget, every fan matters when the Angels take on the Texas Rangers April 8th. Game time, 7.05 at the Big A. Fans in attendance will receive a plaid blanket. It's courtesy of St. Joseph Hogue Health while supplies last. There's one popped up foul on the first base side. Choi is going to run out of room. It's back to the seats and out of play. Don't forget, you can visit angels.com or call 714-4-ANGELS to get your uh, tickets. And operators are standing by. Jet Bandy is the new Angel catcher. So he's working with Hector Santiago. He's done a really good job today for the Angels. There's a new left side of the infield. Cliff Pennington is at short, and Jeffrey Marte is at third. 
Here's the pitch. That's high and away. And the Angels have new corner outfielders with Quinton Berry taking over for Nava out in left field. And the new right fielder is Nick Buss as he replaces Cole Calhoun. There's a pitch outside. Two and two the count. Hector came into this inning having thrown 85, only 85 pitches through six. So, uh, kind of wonder how much longer he'll be in. And the pitch that's lined into left center field. That's going to drop in for a base hit. So, Valencia is on. And sure enough, uh, on cue, manager Mike Sosia is coming out. And uh, that's going to be it for Hector. So, he will be lifted. We have a break in the action of pitching change here in the seventh. We get back, we'll tell you who's going to replace Santiago on the mound. Angels have a 4-2 lead on the Angels Baseball Radio Network and Fox Sports West. Hector! Fernando Salas has wrapped up his warm-up tosses. He's the new Angel pitcher. And the Angels have Pennington playing shortstop. Marte is now the third baseman. Barry's in left field. Buss is in right field. Mentioned earlier, Bandy catching. So Billy Butler will be the first batter that Salas faces with the runner at first base. The uh, pinch runner is Matt Chapman, who... Uh, is a former first round pick of the A's. He's been hitting some home runs for them. Terry, I was looking forward to seeing Matt Chapman on that field. That's right. And I'm, and I'm a little biased. He is a Titan. Yes, he is. Cal State Fullerton product. Here's ball one. It's one ball, no strikes on Billy Butler. We'll give you Santiago's numbers in just a moment. That base runner at first base is Hector's property. They have the tying run at the plate here in Butler. Salas, who's on the hill for the Angels in relief. He's done a nice job. Six scoreless innings this spring. Here's the pitch. That's outside. It misses for a ball. In those six scoreless innings for Salas, two strikeouts. He's been very good in moving the fastball around, getting ground balls, getting early outs, keeping the defense involved. And the slider has been sharp along with that changeup. Inducing into some ground balls, which uh, they could use here. 2 0 pitch that's fouled back behind the plate. Two and one the count. So Santiago, six innings today, six hits, two runs earned. The runner at first is property, one walk, four strikeouts, and he gave up a home run. And not the easiest of pitching conditions today with the way the wind's been blowing. There's one lined in a left, and that's going to bounce all the way out to the wall. 
Barry uh, just getting to it. Fires the ball back to the infield, and that'll be a double all the way for Butler, and they have him at second and third. And they're going to pinch run now for uh, Billy Butler as well. Billy Butler hit a rocket. That's what Billy Butler wants to bring. And you can see Matt Chapman. As, uh, he's laughing because the whole dugout is laughing at him because uh, something happened between second and third, Terry. <laughs> <laughs> they caught his teammates' attention. Andrew Lambeau is the pinch runner at second base for Butler. Chapman took a fall between second and third as he was rounding at full speed. Here's the pitch, and that's a little bit low. Must be a pothole out there. Yeah, you never know here in Arizona. <laughs> Even though they have some great highway surfaces here, I'll tell you that. <laughs> you would know better. Yeah. <laughs> so Salas is in some trouble. Go ahead, run at the plate, tying run at second, nobody out in the pitch, and that's line fair. Just hit the foul line. It's a fair ball. That's going to drive in a pair. Is just getting to it. Is bust out in the right field corner and headed for third. And beating the throw is Lowry. And all of a sudden, the A's have tied up this game at four. So Salas has come in and given up back-to-back -back doubles, or I guess a. Uh, It'll be a triple the way they'll uh, score that one for uh, Lowry. We'll see. Is Bus had a little trouble with that ball out on the warning track. Runner at third in any case. It it's weighs, a tie game. You know, the ace wastes no time on getting to those pitches early now when he's elevated it. He's been in trouble. You can see that. The approach by the ace hitters. Superb looking for something good to hit early, and they got it. So the Angels are going to go to the bullpen again, and that will be it for Salas. Faces just two batters he's lifted. We'll take a break. Be back with more Angels baseball in a moment. It's 4-4 here in the seventh on the Angels baseball radio network and Fox Sports West. Left-handed reliever Greg Molly will take over for the Angels. Eighth appearance for him this spring. And the numbers are pretty good. He's allowed the seven hits in seven innings. He's had a win out of the bullpen. Allowed only two runs. ERA 2.57. So he'll face the left-handed hitting Stephen Vogt. With the potential go-ahead run at third base. Still no outs. Salas gave up a pair of extra base hits to the two batters he faced. He's no longer in there. Molly's delivery is outside. It's one ball, no strikes on vote. Molly continues to drop down more often than we have seen before. 
He can bring it up there when he when he drops down against lefties here. Here's the next pitch. This is hit high in the air in the right center field. We'll see if it's deep enough to get the runner in. It's going to drop in in any case, so it's going to be an RBI hit. And coming in and scoring is the pinch runner from third, Kirkland, on the RBI single by Vogue. Both Gentry and Buss were chasing, but neither could get to that ball. So Oakland has a 5-4 lead. Now players, outfielders playing deeper. Ball hit off the end of the bat. And looking at that big swing, first step perhaps is not coming in, and that's how you can get beat. So all four batters who have stepped up for the A's here in the seventh inning have had hits. Here's Simeon, their eight-hole hitter. He's gone one for two. And the pitch in there for called strike. batters that Salas ended up facing uh, have each scored. He gives up two runs earned in zero innings. Santiago ends up allowing three earned runs in six innings. Here's the pitch. Simeon chops one down the third base side. It's handled by Marte. Second for one. Relay to first. And that's going to be a double play. So the Angels turn their fourth or uh, make it the Angels turn their third to double play today. Two outs. Alonzo will be the batter. And let's pause for stations to identify themselves on the Angels Baseball Radio Network and Fox Sports West. First delivery, it's in there on Alonzo, who's gone 0 for 2. No balls, one strike. Molly's next delivery, that's waved at and missed. I was looking for a name and a resemblance here, Terry, and I know who it is. Molly? Dennis Reyes. Mm. Got a little Dennis Ray is in him. Mm -hmm. Alonzo, uh, for some reason, is heading back to his dugout to change bats. Got the body build. Got the little strut. Looks like a lefty. Yeah. If you didn't know, he seemed out of uniform. Terry, he looks like a lefty. Yep. Dennis Ray has put together a long major league career. Dodgers, Reds. Rangers, Pirates, Diamondbacks, Royals, Padres, Twins, Cardinals, Red Sox. Alonzo got a new bat and came back and took a call third strike with it, so he's out looking and the inning is over. But they do come up with a free spot to the A's here, and they have a 5 4 lead. We go to the bottom of the seventh, seventh inning stretch time on the Angels Baseball Radio Network and Fox Sports West.
Number of changes here for the A's as the Angels bat to uh, start things off in the bottom of the seventh. It's 5-4 in favor of Oakland and they have a new catcher in the ball game as Bruce Maxwell has taken over behind the plate. Jake Smolinski is now playing in left field. Matt Chapman stays in the ball game and he is the third baseman. And Wade Kirkland stays in the game. He was used as a pinch runner. He's now at second. There's a pitch in there on Quentin Berry in the count. One ball, two strikes. Barry has just had trouble getting on track offensively this spring. Just two for 21, hitting under 100. That's yeah, a guy that the Angels wanted to see more of when it comes down to putting the ball in play on the ground, hitting line drives, and even some questions out of the outfield too, Terry, where he has not gotten jumps or certain questionable routes. Experienced players, great speed. Hopefully he'll have some time here to square himself up. Here's the next pitch, and he checks on that one and tips it foul. So two and two, the count. Ryan Dole was still pitching. He came in, got the two batters he faced, Pennington and Navarro, last inning, and replaced uh, Graveman. And the next delivery, that's a little bit outside. These Three and two, two the count. As these two teams, Terry, pardon me, will see each other often, as always, in 2016. And the next pitch. This is hit on one hop near second, backhanded by Kirkland. His throw bounces in, but held on to by the uh, first baseman, Alonzo, and that'll be out number one. Barry is retired. 4-3 on the ground out. Jeffrey Marte will bat. He's hitting out a novice spot. Daniel was one for three with an RBI single. The Angels will be in Oakland April 11th, 12th, and 13th to open up their uh, initial road trip of the season. And the pitch that's fouled off right over by the Angels' dugout. They'll see each other six times in September. There's a pitch in there on the outside part of the plate for a strike. Jeffrey Marte, one swing. He's got some pop. He's driven the ball well. He looked good so far in spring. Here's the next delivery, and that one misses. One ball, two strikes. Dole is working for the sixth time this spring for the A's, and he has yet to give up a run. Five and two-thirds innings coming into the ball game. And here's the next pitch. This is chopped softly on the left side of the infield. Chapman, the new third baseman, has it and throws out Marte. 5-3 on the ground out. Craig Gentry will be the next batter. Fans, Experian, let's get serious about your credit. Go to Experian.com today. And today's game being brought to you by In-N-Out Burger. That's what a hamburger is all about. Ryan Dole with the A's last year. A product of, out of the North Carolina Asheville College. 13 games, 17 innings. Eight earned runs in those 17 innings. Terry, enemy number one, the long ball. He gave up four home runs. He did strike out 16 batters and a pretty decent, very good walks plus hits with per innings pitch, only 1.06 whip. Been a closer in the minors. Average just about a strikeout an inning in the big leagues last year. Here's the next one, and that is cut on a miss by Gentry. Greg Gentry, as he bats for the first time today, uh, he is uh, familiar with this Oakland club. Began last year with them, struggled. One ball, two strikes. 
And the next pitch, and that's outside. Two and two. Angels off tomorrow. Thursday facing the White Sox. Friday facing the A's once again. Here's the pitch. Bounce softly foul on the third base side. It was off the foot, it looked like, of the batter Gentry. So the count holding. It's two balls, two strikes. Breeze still blowing out to right center field. And it's gusting once again. It's been swirling today. There's a swing and a miss, and down on strikes goes Gentry, and Dole has retired uh, all five that he's faced going back to last inning. So seven completed. The eighth is next as we head there. Open has a 5-4 lead on the Angels Baseball Radio Network and Fox Sports West. Greg Molly is uh, back on the mound for the Angels, and his first pitch was fouled up by Billy Burns as we begin the eighth inning. 5-4 Oakland. The A's have had nine hits. The Angels have had eight. Next delivery, it's a little pop in his shallow right center, and that's going to drop in for a hit. So second hit of the day for Burns. He's over there at first base. He's a true example of slap and run. He does it well because he can slap it and he can absolutely run and immediately becomes a threat here to steal. So the batter stepping up for the first time today is J.P. Sportman. Sportman has come in to take over in left field. Right-handed batter toss over to first base and the runner gets back. Molly's pitch right in there for a called strike. Angels have the infield playing it at double play depth. Sportman last year in the Arizona Summer League and uh, also Class A Stockton. There's a toss over to first and diving back goes Burns. Again, a toss over to first base. Uh, Burns drawing a lot of attention. 
Sportman, who's batting one for four so far this spring. Young player from Schenectady, New York. Swings at that pitch and fouls it off on the right side, back and out of play. Angels of you, Santiago on the mound. Salas and now Molly. They have turned three double plays, two of them the six, four, three way. Here's the next pitch that's fouled back to the screen, so a couple strikes on the batter. Smolinski is waiting on deck, he'll be hitting out a Reddick spot. He replaced him in right field. Josh Reddick was one for three with an RBI. And Molly's next pitch. Line just out of the reach of Pennington, the shortstop. That'll drop into left center. Boy, all of a sudden, the A's are uh, just getting balls that drop in out of the reach of some of the Angel fielders, whether it's infield or outfield. They have a couple of hits to start off the eighth and runners at first and second with nobody out. There are six for their last eight. Against three different or two different angels relievers. So Smolinski stepping up. This is his first at bat today. And here's the pitch. He takes it for a called strike. Smolinski having a pretty good spring, hitting over 300. Trying to win a reserve outfield spot with Oakland coming out of training camp. Next delivery on him. Takes that pitch. It's in there for a called strike. A pretty extended stay on the mound there for Molly so far. 15 pitches. You don't see very often where Mike Sosha will have a reliever close out an inning as Molly did in the seventh inning and bring him back out. But he's getting a long look here this spring. Next delivery. This is chopped out the second. Looks like a double play ball touching the bag at second base. And then the relay on the first. That is a twin killing. That'll work. That is four double play for the Angels here this afternoon. Cutting down on the many threats the A's have had. And still keeping it as of right now a one run ball game. This one to the second baseman. It was a good job communicating with his shortstop to the right. Immediately said, I have it. Steps on the bag and fires away. Brandon Faro uh, moving over there. He's at second base. Began the game at uh, third base. So here's Chapman at the plate and the pitch. That is low and inside. Here's the next delivery. That's a little bit inside. Matt Chapman, the batter. He had a home run yesterday for the A's. He's had eight hits this spring and 30 times up for Oakland, and half of the hits for the eight have been home runs. He is a Titan and a good one. There's the next delivery, and that's in there for a called strike. Terry, I was able to, uh, through the Titan family, get a scouting report on him. Okay. Coach Rick Vandercook says he has as raw strength as and powers anybody he's ever coached. Wow. High praise right there. Played shortstop as a junior. You know why? Because there was a guy next to him named Nolan Arenado that played third base. There you go. How about for those two players on a high school team? Here's the next one on Chapman, and he will draw a walk. Walks on five pitches, so that'll keep the inning alive, and runners at the corners now. Andrew Lambeau will be the next batter. This is going to be his first time up. And around the time when games usually slow down, just like the traffic beyond the... Right field wall, Terry, with the 10 hot freeway right there. 
Things kind of slow down around the same time. Interesting, huh? It does. And that traffic is still slow once the game's over. <laughs> he might end, but the traffic uh, doesn't end. I can tell you that right now. <laughs> it's on cue with the relievers coming in. Things really slow down on that yep. highway. And it's quite busy, of course, with the many travelers in this area for spring break. There's a hitch that is in there. Although I, I'll uh, tell you a little bit later today, I've found a new... Um, little shortcut getting out of Tempe Diablo Stadium which wow. I'm really excited about here's the pitch chopped on the right side that one is fielded there by Navarro and the flip to first is in time and the inning is over on the fielder's choice so they had some people get on base in the inning but nobody scores they had two hits a walk in the inning but blanked uh, we are headed to the bottom of the eighth the Angels are down 5-4 on the Angels Baseball Radio Network and Fox Sports West Here in the bottom of the eighth, couple of uh, changes for the Oakland A's. They have a new center fielder, and uh, out there in center field is Jacob Brugman, and they also have a new pitcher, Aaron Kirks, and the first pitch on Soto. He hits one high, and he hits it deep in the left, and that ball is gone. First ball swinging, Giovanni Soto, and he got all of it out there. He hit it to the back part of the grass area down the left field line and one swing of the bat ties up the ball game at five. Giovanni Soto has been flashing tremendous power here in the spring even though his average coming in is under 160 but that is already his third home run seven RBIs in only 20 at bats. So Nick Buss will be the next batter. This is his first at bat. He's hitting out a Calhoun spot. And that pitch is in there for a strike. Sort of hero welcome of that dugout back in the game. They just could use a lot of that this season from their catchers. Little extra offense. Aaron Kirks, whose pitching last name is spelled K-U-R-C-Z. And as he works, this is his first appearance for the A's this spring. So maybe a little nervous energy and... Boy, after his first pitch leaves the ballpark, you gotta kind of wonder what he's thinking. Oh boy, you know, you got run catcher saying, Oh, I know what's going on. I know, I know what that kid's gonna do. First pitch fastball. Yeah. I'm swinging, swinging hard. Here's the next delivery. It's a cut and a miss by Bus. So it's two balls, two strikes. So 
anyone's game here in the bottom of the eighth. 5-5 five, five to score. Here's the next delivery. Reaching at that one is Buss. He lifts a shallow fly ball to left field, coming in under and making the catch his Sportman out there. And that'll be the first out. Here's Choi, who's had a good ball game. Pair of hits for him. Two for three. Choi has gone all the way today. Mike Sosha taking a long look at him. Played first base the whole ball game. Here's the pitch. And that one misses for a ball. And Choi was in the original lineup. Kirk's ready, and the next pitch in there for a strike. The reason I mentioned that at third because, of course, in case you tune in later, the Angels had a scheduled trip, half of the squad, over to Salt Lake City for an exhibition game against their AAA ball club. And unfortunately, and very unfortunately, that trip got canceled due to the snow in Salt Lake City. Mike Socha was among those ready to go. Mike Trout, Jit Bandy was heading out there. C.J. Crone, Cole Calhoun. Garrett Richards was going to make the trip. He wasn't going to pitch, but he was on the uh, traveling squad. He was making that connection with so many of the players that have played for the Angels that are in the Angels roster. they also made their way through Salt Lake. Two and two now. The count on Choi. Kirk's ready, and the next pitch, that's way high and outside. Nowhere close. This Aaron Kirk's pitched a double-A, triple-A last year in the A system. Guy who has come back from the Tommy John elbow surgery going back a few seasons ago. We'll see what gives on the 3-2. Here it comes, and it's cut on, fouled off on the left side out of play. Jet Bandy waiting on deck. He's yet to bat in this ball game. 3-2 once again. Fouled off once again. So hanging tough is G-Man Choi. Bottom of the eighth inning being brought to you today here on this Tuesday by our friends at Rotolo Chevrolet in Fontana. Rotolo Chevrolet pursuing excellence every day. Visit them at Rotolo.com. That's Rotolo.com. In a full count with one out, a run in. 5-5 five, five in the eighth, the pitch. That is a called third strike. Oh, in. you gotta, we got to protect the plate. G-Man. Even the fans don't like it, but they know the Venus has been calling it. This is twice against them today. So Choi uh, did not like that call at all. He just dropped his bat and then did a double take. But a strikeout victim, and that's out number two. It might have been a little low, but you know what? It wasn't that low when you have seen that many pitches and you are in protection mode. So here's Bandy, and here's the pitch. Goes after it, fouls it back behind the plate out of play. Well, you would think the Angels will certainly end up carrying only two catchers, but Bandy has uh, distinguished himself this spring. He's hitting over 400. That has now been a presence with the bat. Boy, and, and, and a bat that keeps developing. And he's not uh, bad behind the plate. Pitchers like throwing to uh, Bandy. Big catcher. He's got a good demeanor for a catcher, too. He works hard, keeps quiet. Great communicator with the guys on, on the mound. Here's the pitch on its way. Bandy checks that one is low. And anytime you see a career path, Terry, that uh, projected one way and all of a sudden the player turns it around, you have to applaud and know that there's more in there. And he's made himself valuable, not just to the Angels, but 
for other organizations that are looking for catching depth. He's been in the system for a while. Here's the pitch, and it's fouled off. Bandy, a very popular player last year at AAA Salt Lake, and even though he's still a young guy, he was one of the leaders in that clubhouse earning, last season. Earning that call-up. Living that moment he will never forget. First hit home run in Minnesota. Count on Bandy. It's two balls, two strikes, and the next delivery struck him out looking. He caught the outside corner. So after Kirk's got off to the rough start, the homer on the first pitch he threw, he comes back, retires the next three with a pair of strikeouts. Ninth inning is next. It is a 5-5 game here at Tempe Diablo on the Angels Baseball Radio Network and Fox Sports West. Angels have a new pitcher, number four of the day. A.J. Ochter will take over for Greg Molly. Molly ended up going a couple of innings for the Angels today, and he did not allow any runs. Did give up three hits, and the first pitch it's fouled off by Wade Kirkland, who's at the plate. This is his first time up. Ball goes out of play on the right side. The count nothing and one. Molly, the uh, last reliever for the Angels, also had a walk and a strikeout in his two innings. And there's a cut and a miss by Kirkland. 0 oh 2 is the count. Ochter, when we've seen him, he's pitched well this spring. Eighth appearance now. He's allowed just one run in eight innings, has a save, ERA in the low ones this spring. And the next pitch, here's a pop-up on the right side of the infield. Let's see who will call for it. It'll be Navarro, and he'll make the grab on the dirt halfway between first and second. That's the first out here in the ninth. Bruce Maxwell is the batter. He took over for Stephen Vogt behind the plate. Vogt had a one-for-three day with an RBI. And this will be Maxwell's first at bat today. Pitch on its way. Chop foul over on the right side. No balls. One strike to count on Maxwell. Limited action this spring. Hitting just over 300. 4 for 13 as a home run. Left-handed batter awaits the next pitch. And Opter delivers. And that's chop foul over on the right side. 
Let's look at some of the A's numbers, Terry. Um, no concerns whatsoever on Sonny Gray, who's had a bit of a rough going here in spring training. 5.6 ERA and three starts. But don't worry about it. Not much. Remember last spring, Felix Hernandez had an ERA over 11. And many were thinking, well, here it is. All those innings have caught up with him. Didn't happen. Turned it on. There's a pitch that misses. They have to be concerned about Rich Hill. Yes. Who they signed to be in their rotation. That's a concern. He has had a rough spring, and he signed a $6 million deal with Oakland uh, for one year based on four starts that he had last year with the Boston Red Sox. Only four starts in the big leagues all last year. Hill is 0-2 in spring training. Three starts, ERA of 15.26. Here's the next pitch that's lined into center field, but right there waiting and making the grab is Gentry. Ball was hit hard by Maxwell, but he's an easy out. Two are gone. And for those of you who uh, follow the Angels closely, the name Rich Hill. Uh, Probably rings a bell. He pitched for the Angels briefly in the 2014 season. You're talking like briefly? Yes. Literally briefly. Right. <laughs> well, that's what I said. If you follow the Angels very closely, you probably remember him. And if you blinked, you missed it. The other part of the uh, Rich Hill story, signing with Oakland as a free agent at the end of the year, he began last year in independent league baseball. Then... Uh, Signed with the Red Sox, was at their AAA club in Pawtucket. Got a few starts with the Austin Red Sox. Here's a ball lined by Simeon, caught by Marte. And that's how the inning will end. So Ochter has a 1-2-3 inning despite a couple of lineouts. We're headed to the bottom of the ninth. Let's see if the Angels can push one across. 5-5 game on the Angels Baseball Radio Network and Fox Sports West. So we head to the bottom of the ninth, 5-5. Five, five, the Angels and the A's here. Uh, Mike Sosia came out uh, from the coaching area during the half-inning break and was talking to the home plate umpire, Dana Demutes, and we get the feeling that if the Angels fail to score, this game will probably be called after nine innings. I don't know that we're going to... We're going to go extra now. Uh, DC tells me, uh, yes, indeed, that is true. So here's Cliff Pennington batting and the first pitch of ball to count 1-0. and Meantime, the A's do have a pitcher warming up in their bullpen, but 
doesn't appear we're going to go beyond nine innings today. And that one is fouled back behind the plate. Angels have had four ties this spring, and the A's have had three. Here comes the 1-1, one, one, and that's fouled off on the left side, back and out of play. Pennington has been up once since coming into the ball game, and he popped out. Corey Walter is the new pitcher. He's the fourth of the day for Oakland. And here's the next pitch. This is chopped out towards short. Simeon has played there all day, and his throw will get him. So one up, one gone here. Bottom of the ninth. Walter has appeared in three games now for the A's and worked a total of two innings. He has not allowed any hits or runs. Ray Navarro gets set to bat. He's been in there all day, either at third base or second base. He's one for three, scored two runs. And he takes that one a little bit low. Jose is headed downstairs. He will visit with Angels manager Mike Sosha once this game is in the books. There's a pitch that is taken for a ball. 2-0 and is the count. Quinton Berry waiting on deck for the Angels. And here's the 2-0. That's high. Three balls, no strikes. Walter doesn't waste time. He's ready, and that's a pitch outside. That's a four-pitch walk. Potential winning run on at first base with one out, bottom of the ninth. Fans, here's the deal for you. 1995 gets you proactive, plus a rotating deep cleansing brush. It's valued at $45. You're guaranteed to get clear and stay clear, or you'll get your money back. Call 1-800-644-5944. That's 1-800-644-5944. Here's Barry and the first pitch to him. It's outside. He's grounded out his only time up. And he's the guy we uh, mentioned when he batted back in the bottom of the seventh inning. He just hasn't hit much at all for the Angels this spring. He could really use something uh, positive in this at bat. Barry is just two for 22 at the plate. Here's the pitch. Outside and low. 2-0 and oh, the count. So all of a sudden, Walter having some location problems. He walked Navarro on four straight. He's missed on the first two to Barry, and that gets the catcher Maxwell out to the mound to have a word with the reliever. Angels have done some good things in this ball game. A couple of home runs. The Angels have also turned four double plays today. Here's the pitch. That's high, and now it's 3-0, and and that's seven straight pitches that Walter has missed on. Jeffrey Marte would be up next. Here's the 3-0, and that's right down the heart of the plate. That's a called strike. Over 7,500 here today to see the Angels and the A's in action. The Angels will face Oakland on the first road trip of the season. And uh, will play uh, the uh, first road game of the year in Oakland on April the 11th, uh, Monday. There's a toss over to first and back to the uh, bag goes the base runner over there, Ray Navarro. Here's the next pitch, and that one is ball four. So the Angels now just need a hit to likely win this ball game. Runners at first and second. One out. Marte will be the batter. Kurt Young, their pitching coach, is out there to try and settle down Walder, who retired the first batter, Pennington, easily on a ground out. And since then, 
can't seem to get the ball over. Back-to-back one-out walks. That meeting wraps up. Marte is grounded out. His only time up. Marte's had a good spring at the plate. Came into the game hitting over 300. He's had a home run. Angels just need a single in all likelihood to win this one. They've brought the infield in a bit. At kind of more medium depth. Outfield not too deep. Here's the pitch. And that one a little bit low. Again, another pitch that Walter misses on. One ball, no strikes. So the last 10 pitches he's thrown, only one of those pitches a strike. Right-hander against right-hander. Here's the pitch. That misses again. 2-0 to count. Yesterday in that game in Maryvale against Milwaukee, the Angels dropped it on a walk-off homer. Angels trying to get a walk-off hit here in the bottom of the ninth against the A's. Here's the next pitch. That's in there, and that was a borderline strike right there. 2-1 to count. Pitch looked a little bit low. Breeze continues to blow. It's been blowing all day long. We've had three home runs between the two teams today. 2-1 delivery. Marte takes low. It's 3-1. So Navarro, who's at second, he walked on four straight pitches. Barry walked on five pitches. And Marte has seen three out of the four to him out of the strike zone. Walter's on the verge of walking the bases loaded here, and the 3-1 pitch, and he walked him. It was low. So he's thrown 14 pitches in this inning, and only two of them have been strikes. Runners everywhere. Bottom of the ninth, one out. Marte, the winning run at third, and now... They're going to have to make a pitching change. And they had just gotten someone up once again in the bullpen. So breaking the action, a pitching change coming up. We'll be back with more Angels baseball in the bottom of the ninth on the Angels Baseball Radio Network and Fox Sports West. Well, the new pitcher for Oakland is Seth Frankoff. 
He has worked a little bit for them uh, this spring. This is his fourth appearance. He's given up five hits, six runs, including two homers in two and two-thirds innings. ERA is over 20 this spring. And the first pitch on Gentry takes it for a strike. Base is loaded. One out. Fly ball deep enough to the outfield. Wins the ball game. Gentry awaits the next pitch from Frankoff. And here it comes. He pops him up. Foul territory. First base side. This ball is playable on foul ground. And coming over and making the catch is the second baseman, Kirkland. So Frankoff gets a huge out right there. Now two are gone with the bases loaded. And here's Soto, who has seen one pitch so far since he came into the ball game. And on the only pitch he saw, he hit it out of the ballpark. That was last inning against Kirks. So we'll see what happens with two outs. Bases loaded. Here's the pitch. That's low. Good block on that one by the catcher, Maxwell. One ball, no strikes. All three base runners here for the Angels in this bottom of the ninth reached on walks. Here's the 1-0 on Soto. Outside, ball two. Well, the way this inning has gone, it would almost be apropos that Soto walks in the winning run. Got the count in his favor right now. Two balls and no strikes. Frankoff, the fifth Oakland pitcher, and the second one here in the bottom of the ninth. The Angels haven't had a hit in the bottom of the ninth, but have the bases loaded. And here's the delivery. Uh, big cut and a miss by Soto. Was looking to hit a grand slam right there. He took a vicious cut at that one. Two balls, one strike. Here's the 2-1, outside, ball three. So, Frankoff is on the verge of walking in the winning run. And that's all the Angels have done in this inning, is get on base with walks. We'll see what happens. It counts three and one, and the next pitch. He walked them, it was low. Base is loaded. Walked off. Victory on a walk for the Angels. Not a single batter had a hit here at the bottom of the ninth inning. Four walks out of the six that batted, and the Angels win this ball game today by the final of six to five. Well, just shows you have a good eye. Uh, good things can happen. Angels come away with the victory here again by the final of six to five. Mike Sosia congratulating the uh, players as they come off the field. Strange bottom of the ninth inning, but the Angels will take it. Coming away with the victory here today against the A's, and these two teams will square off again uh, in just a few days when they meet in Mesa uh, coming up on Friday. Six to five, the final score here today. Let's go down to Jose Mota and Angels manager Mike Sosia. Thanks, Harry. Well, Mike, uh, you have to be flexible in your plans, and there was a change of plans today, the trip in Salt Lake City being canceled. Yeah. How quickly did you adjust your plans with the lineup, especially? Well, we had all, uh, in all our intent was to go to Salt Lake, even if it was some bad weather, but it got, uh, just in case there was a chance to play, it got just too bad this morning there. Uh, so we had we had most of our day planned. We just reinserted Mike Trout and Cole Calhoun, a couple guys that were going to be in a Salt Lake trip into the lineup this afternoon. Hector Santiago, you wanted him to get up seven times he accomplished that how effective was the early in the counts and how could this translate into the regular season well really we're looking at six times six and ninety but he had some pitches left and charlie said here's a chance to get him up seven if his next start just peel him back a little bit if we have to he'll be ready for the season uh that's that's uh, he, he really pitched well on a day when we thought it was going to be really tough to pitch with the wind blowing out uh, had a real good breaking ball he was using uh and and uh, just just got that fastball into the zone early 
Mike, we saw Anderson Simmons back on the field. How did he look? The plan from here on to see day to day how he responds, or are you looking forward to having him on the field here from the rust? Well, we'll see. He'll have an off day tomorrow as we don't have a game, as we have an off day, and he'll come back uh, on Thursday and see how he just see how he feels. And uh, he felt really good today. He looked great in the field, so we don't anticipate um, anything but him just getting on his normal schedule now. Enjoy your off day. If there's one, enjoy your off day. Okay, Jose, thank you. Terry, as you know, sometimes there's some work to be done here in the backfields on a scheduled off day for the big league team, so let's hope manager Mike does enjoy and has an off day. All right, thanks, Jose. Good to have you back, uh, Jose, uh, back on our broadcast today. And the Angels come away with the victory with four walks in the bottom of the ninth inning and win it today by the final of 6-5. to five. For those of you watching on TV, Jose will be joined by Patrick O'Neill, and they'll have a lot more post-game analysis coming up in just a few minutes on Angels Live. We'll have some more for you on the radio side as well. 6-5 Angels over Oakland today. This is the Angels Baseball Radio Network and Fox Sports West.